Brawlers, baby. All right, it's your boy Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This is the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. My associates at threekingsboxing.com, Studio 9. And we have the former WBA super featherweight, super flyweight champ of the world in the building who just lost on that ferocious call by the referee of a headbutt in his rematch versus uh, uh, Franco, Joshua Franco. We got Andrew Maloney in the house. How you doing, champ? Hey Rick, thanks for having me on the show, mate. Um, oh man, I'm doing, no problem. I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. We'd like to thank you first and foremost for uh, bringing brawlers. This is our first international interview ever, so uh, this is a this is a milestone for us, and and that's all because of you. And you saw my article and the piece that I did on you from that night, and you reached out and you granted me uh, this interview. So thank you very much, brother. I appreciate you. Nah, my pleasure, mate. My pleasure. So, man, I mean, what a night. What a what a night, brother. And I, my apologies for you to have to come all the way across the water like that to the U.S. and give up training camp and 10, 12 weeks away from your family, probably even longer than that because it was an international uh, thing, if you will. And then, you know, you come into the fight, tip-top shape. You lost the title back in June of 2020. You come back five months, tip-top shape corrected your deficiencies, you knew what you did wrong in the first fight, and you came back and you had a brilliant fight plan with that vigorous jab, man, all night long. That's the key to your success. Best punch in boxing is the jab, and you proved that on the night of November 14th. How did, how did you walk away feeling knowing you got robbed like that and we wasted 30 minutes looking for an infamous headbutt that never existed? Yeah, that's right. Um the five months in between the two fights, I trained so hard and, and spent a lot of time away from my family and just did absolutely everything I could to get that world title back. And I was in the best shape of my life. I trained so hard. And as you could see in those two rounds, I was on fire and I was dominating that fight. And I was so confident that I, that I was going to win my world title back. And and the fight started and everything was just going to plan. Everything that we'd worked on the gym was was coming together. I was dominating the fight. And as you said, I was landing jab after jab on his eye. And I've got no doubt in my mind that's what closed his eye was the jab. Absolutely. That's what fans don't understand. And see, when you get into that ring and everything goes to plan from the sound of that bell, you executed that fight plan brilliantly your trainer had to have been very happy after that first round with, with probably little to no extra coaching from that first round other than keep doing what you're doing, Andrew. Keep sticking that jab in his face. And what happened was it was a snappy, crispy jab. The jab and then the thumb of the glove is what closed his eye. No headbutts there. And as they reviewed this tape, when you guys were getting to the clinches in that second round on the opposite side of his head, on his good eye, which was his left, the right eye was the one that you closed shut with that infamous jab, if you will. I mean, what was it that all the millions of fans that was viewing could see this, but you had the people in New York doing the instant replay with ESPN from every angle of two minutes and 15 seconds, and nobody saw this headbutt because the referee said it was a headbutt? Yeah, that's right. And I mean as the millions of people who tuned in on TV saw that they went over and over the footage for almost 30 minutes. They couldn't find a head clash because there was none, but yet they still didn't overturn the decision. So I don't know what more they needed to see. I just knew with the instant replay, because, you know, we watch other sports. I'm sure you do back in Australia. You either watch NFL football or soccer. And if there's a, a, a play in question, for the NFL, NBA, baseball, they go to the instant replay. If a if an NFL player is thrown a pass to the receiver and he catches it low and traps it in the ground, and one referee says that's a complete pass, and then the other one says no, he trapped it, then they got to throw the red flag in, review the call, 
come back and say after further review, that was an incomplete pass, repeat third down, fourth down, whatever the case may be. Same thing we thought in your fight. I just hate hey, they're going to have to reverse this because there is no headbutt. He closed his eye with a solid, multiple solid jabs to the eye. And that was your target. Once you painted that eye, that was your go-to target. And you knew that. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's what – and the referee didn't make it clear to our corner or myself that that damaged the eye he thought was from a head clash. So I begin to continue to target that eye after the first punch and obviously close that up very quickly. And had we had known that he'd called a head clash, it would have changed my strategy. I would have gone to the body for the next few rounds until we'd passed the four-round four mark where it then would have gone to the scorecards. Oh, so Absolutely. It's a shame. And then, like, as you touched on, all these other sports have, you know, the instant replay, and it's a good system. And it's great that boxing now has that, and this could have really been a good thing for the sport for and the Nevada Commission yeah. to show that this replay works well. It would have been you know, really made them look great on the night. But instead, they came up with the wrong decision. And now millions of people around the world are saying, you know, why this system's terrible. Yeah, why have instant replay? And, you know, what are these guys watching? And, you know, boxing's corrupt. And it's been a, it's been a bad thing for the sport. And I love boxing. I want people to be, you know, following the sport. And, you know, more fans, the better. But now yeah. I've got people messaging me, Hundreds of people saying, "This is why I don't watch boxing. I'm going. I'm going to watch UFC now and things like that." And it's yeah. just a bad thing for the sport. It was a. It gave boxing another black eye, is what I call it, when this happens, yeah. or poor judging. And then you have judges making all these uh these astronomical uh, distances in the scorecards. You got bad judging, then you have bad refs. Not once did I ever hear that referee say the closing of the eye was caused by a headbutt. And I'm wondering at some point in time, when the referee went over to check the eye, did, did, did Franco's trainer, maybe Robert Garcia, say, hey, that was a headbutt that closed his eye, not a punch. And did that put that into the referee's head to come out and say that? Because at the end of all of this, all this instant replay for 30 minutes, they held this show up before we moved on to the main event. And it was seen like they did it to save face and of the, of the referee. He didn't yeah. go into camp. He didn't leave his family. He didn't take one punch. He didn't throw one punch. Yeah, Unbelievable. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's the only thing I can think of is that they didn't want to overturn the referee's decision and possibly make him look bad. But like, he's in the heat in the moment. He's got to make a split decision call. Um, and yeah, people make mistakes. So exactly. I don't think it would have been necessarily a bad look on him. Oh. I think it would have been, you know, a good thing to show how good this replay system can be. But instead, they made it look terrible. And you hit the nail on the head. The instant replay would have put boxing in that light to say, hey, this is why we have it now. The referee, he's a human being. He's entitled to make bad judgment calls, bad mistakes, some angles he can't see. He don't have a clear view. That's why there is an instant replay because they can turn that, that whole round to all different types of angles, if you will, to see exactly what the referee thought he saw, but it was not there. So in that case, we're going to reverse the referee's call. No harm, no foul. And the referee yeah. just, you just would have helped the instant replay matter in making a bad call. Not purposely, but something you thought you saw was not there at all. Now, I saw yeah. when you got out of the ring and you moved over to the platform to do a brief interview real quick. And it seems like, I don't know if Joshua Franco was talking smack to you, but you guys had exchanged words and you said something across the platform. What, what did he say to you and what did you say back to him, champ? No, it wasn't actually Franco. He didn't have anything to say. Okay. You could see from, you could see from his body language in the ring for that he knew. 30 minutes. He, he knew, yeah. He knew that uh, it was from a punch. And I think he expected this decision to be overturned. Um, so he had nothing to say. It was okay. um, it was actually Robert Garcia's son who um, had a lot to say. Um, Franco's okay. brother and his dad had a few things to say, but 
nothing, nothing, you know, worth mentioning. They were going on about how badly he beat me in the first fight, which I wasn't arguing about. Like, right, we, we're talking about the rematch tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're talking about five um, months ago, buddy, but who, who got the better, who was the better man tonight? That's you right, know? and that's what I was saying. Like, oh, spade a spade. You won. Say that. Be a man. Yeah, that's right. And I wasn't there to argue what happened five months ago. I was there that night to prove that I'm a better fighter than that and that I believe I did that. And I believe that belt should have been around my waist. That's all I was concerned about. Yeah, and new two-time world champion. That's what the proper language should have been that yeah. night, uh, champ. And here's the other thing. I, I commend Bob Aaron, too, because Bob Aaron was hot. And he understood exactly what the replay was in place to do. He watched the replay. He walked over there and looked at it with the guys reviewing it. And he even said himself, there is no headbutt here. Let's go ahead and make the right call here. Let's make the right call and and, 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 and give boxing a clean slate for once. For yeah, once that's in the sport of boxing. Let's clean it up starting tonight with this instant replay. Yeah, that's right. And while we waited in the ring for that 30 minutes or so, everyone that was watching the replay, um, Bob Arum, as you mentioned, but also Timothy Bradley, Andre Ward, Joe Tessitore, basically everyone who was watching the replay was saying to me in the ring, there's no head clash. It was from a punch. Yeah. So I was so confident they were going to overturn the decision. Um, and then I just couldn't believe it when they announced the fight as a no contest. No I was contest. Just in shock. Now, where are we at? It, there has to be a third fight. What, what are the talks about that rematch? Because I, I said to myself that night watching, I said, I guarantee you this third fight has already been discussed and promised before Andrew Maloney leaves the United States. Yep, yep, that's right. And that night, as soon as the fights were over, we had a talk with Bob Arum, and he said to me that we still have Franco for one more fight as part of his contract. And we're going to make sure that's against you. We're going to do the trilogy fight. And we're hopefully going to have that fight in Australia in front of a big crowd because things are getting back to normal here in Australia. We okay. can have big crowds at sporting events now. And it'd just be amazing to have that third fight here in front of my friends and family. Um, you know, after all we've been through, these, especially these last couple of weeks, to, um, to win that world title back at home, yeah, would be do, really special. Do yeah. you think Franco and his team will agree to come to Australia for that fight? Was that part of the contract? You do one in the U.S., and if need be, we you do one in my hometown as well? Or do you, is that that's something that you're hoping that they can persuade them to come to Australia? Because uh, to have that hometown crowd, that's, that's amazing, first and foremost, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure what his contract is, but – um, I think he would have a point to prove after what happened the other the other night. Um, I think everyone around the world agrees that he doesn't deserve that belt right now. And I've come over to America twice now to take him on in his backyard. So I think only it only fair. makes sense. It's only fair that the third fight's in Australia. Oh yeah, so that you have a good argument there. I came over here twice. Now let me let me host and be a good host to you in my country. So. Yep. Come, come on over here, and uh, I'll close your eye again in the third fight. <laughs> yeah, you know that's I mean? right. Basically, I mean, I would go into the third fight. I would pick up in the third fight in round two and start the fight right there. Bam, right where you was there already with the eye swollen and just finished decimating that eye with that damn. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's that's right, and I'm so, looking forward to it. That's what I would do if I was you, Tim. But, I mean, hey, we appreciate you for your time. I know you've been busy. A lot of people have been getting at you for the interviews. As you stated, you had one beforehand before you got on here with me. And I, I thank you again for honoring that all the way from Australia. It's a different time zone. It's, it's like in the afternoon, Wednesday there. It's like almost 9 p.m. here, Tuesday night uh, in, uh, in the, on the East Coast where I'm at. Real quick before you go, let the boxing fans know how they can follow you on your social media platforms, if you will. And then at the end of that, please mention that they're watching the Brawler Sports Media. Yeah. Now, thank you for tuning in to Brawler Sports Media. It's been a pleasure to be on the show. And uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Andrew Maloney.
Maloney, spell M-O-L-O-N-E-Y. And you can check out my website, www.teammaloney.com.au. All right, brother. Hey, man, I appreciate you once again. It's your boy, Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This is the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. Shout out to my associates at 3kingsboxing.com, Studio 9. We're in the building live with the former and soon-to-be WBA Super Flyweight Champ, again, two-time world champion, hopefully, uh, my man Andrew Maloney. Once again, brother, thank you. I know you say you don't uh, uh, celebrate Thanksgiving over there, but I am thankful for this interview. And on that yeah. note, happy holidays to you and your family, mate. Yeah, no, nah, my pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone over your side. My man, God bless. Brawler Sports Media, Rick Mohammed. Till next time. Let's go, champs. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Brawlers, Brawlers baby. Brawlers.